Let's stick with the energy debate. And while the PM was in the Hunter flagging that billion-dollar solar scheme, he again showed his ignorance and short-sightedness when it came to nuclear power. We can have a nuclear reactor in decades' time uh, if you can find anyone who'll finance it, which you can't, which means that nothing happens as nothing happened for the last decade. Well, you can seize the opportunities which are there. Yeah, no one's investing on something that's illegal in this country, Prime Minister. Strange stuff. Let's bring in Jasmine Diab. She's the managing director of Global Nuclear Security Partners Australia. She's also just joined the advisory board of teenage campaigner Will Shackles Group Nuclear for Australia. Thanks for joining us, Jasmine. How would you suggest the debate is poised here in Australia? Nuclear energy still completely outlawed, but we're looking at getting nuclear propelled submarines, but the coalition getting very forward leaning on this issue now. Yeah, I guess, um, thanks for having me, Chris. I guess this is part of the issue and why I wanted to be a part of Nuclear for Australia. Australia's energy policy topic shouldn't be politicised. And because it's being politicised, I believe Australians are not getting all the answers they need and deserve to make good decisions for long-term energy security. And uh, being a part of Nuclear for Australia and their no politics, just the facts, um, campaign is allowing us to reach more Australians to share with them the benefits of peaceful nuclear technologies because Australia's nuclear literacy is pretty low thanks to the prohibition on nuclear power generation introduced in the 90s. Well, there are some strong historically Labor voices when it comes to nuclear. The late, great Bob Hawke was pro-nuclear. The uh, Premier of South Australia, Peter Malinowskis, is pro-nuclear. Uh, there are voices in the union movement, in the AWU in particular, that are pro-nuclear. Uh, so Labor's left to running an argument that gets rid of all the old scares about safety and the like in the main. They're, they're mainly saying it's not financially viable in Australia. Is that the case or not? Well, I guess this is where the scare campaign has been really successful. It's been able to latch on to things like cost of generation and builds, uh, things like sensationalised media and pop culture to educate people that nuclear isn't safe, isn't affordable, when in fact Australia hasn't been able to do a good cost-benefit analysis of what nuclear looks like here because it is banned. Uh, the CSIRO and their cost model, Gen Cost Model Report, uh, clearly didn't have nuclear well thought through. They penny penny picked bits about small modular reactors to produce a report that said nuclear is too expensive. When if we actually remove the legislative ban, look at the Australian landscape, we can do a decent cost benefit analysis, look at the small modular reactor builds across the globe, not just pick one yep. that is a, a build that is going slowly, uh, to allow us to see what the benefits potentially are here. Well, we'll keep doing that, Jasmine, with your help, hope, uh, your help and uh, so we'll hope to uh, catch up with you again soon. I appreciate it.